Hi, everyone, and welcome to my YouTube channel, ESP Daniela. So for this video, I'm just going to get right into it on how I was able to win over $125,000 in scholarships for undergrad and graduate school, debt-free for both degrees. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I did was that I focused on less competitive scholarships. See, a lot of times when people start the scholarship application process, they only apply for those nationally competitive scholarships. But I want for you to think for a moment. If you are applying for only national ones where it's open to everyone in the nation, that competitive pool will be like trying to win the lottery. Whereas if you apply to a scholarship that is only available to those locally where you are, you're gonna be more likely to win. So I want for you to keep that in mind. So another thing that really helped me to stand out with my scholarship applications was my scholarship essay, because that is in fact the most important part of your application. A lot of people think that instead your stats are important, um, your grades, things like that. Of course, those hold a certain weight to the application, but by far your essay is the most important because I want for you to just think about it. A lot of people have excellent grades, 4.0s, great test scores and all that but not everyone can write in a way of where it persuades someone to give them free money. That's like a whole nother skill set you have to have that they don't necessarily teach you in school. So with that being said, you want to make sure that your writing sounds humble and that you are not entitled, that you don't sound entitled to win. So as an example, a metaphor, if you will, of this, let's take the example of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And I know this might sound crazy, but bear with me, it'll all make sense. So with Charlie, he was humble from the very beginning of the competition all the way up to the end when he ended up winning it. However, at the same time, he was technically um, less quote unquote qualified to win that competition as opposed to the other applicants, such as the Blueberry Girl. As you can see in the background, she had all of these trophies and whatnot that show how accomplished she was. So with that in mind, even if you don't have as much to show for as far as your accomplishments, as long as your writing sounds more genuine and reaches to the heart a lot more than other applicants, you're going to be more likely to win. So another thing I did with my winning scholarship applications was that I personalized my writing to that particular scholarship. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that I totally rewrote an essay every single time. Rather, in fact, I was recycling the same essay over and over. I only made minor adjustments here and there. So those minor adjustments might be of where like in my concluding paragraph, I have a sentence that says, if awarded, insert the actual name of that scholarship. This would have such a profound impact on my academic career endeavors, something like that. So you want to make sure that your writing is custom to your audience because then that will give them the impression that, oh, this applicant didn't just copy and paste this from past applications. They made it specifically for us. It's genuine. Another way that you can ensure that your essay is custom to that particular scholarship is doing some research about them. So for example, if you go to their website and you look at their mission statement, their values, or perhaps like community projects that they have done in the past, if you too hold those values, if you too have done a community project similar to that, then you want to make sure to mention that in your writing. Why? Because it shows that you are like-minded to your audience. So for example, if you are on their website and they talk about this food drive that they did and you also did a food drive, then make sure to talk about that because there's a connection there. Another tip as far as your writing is to quantify how you have made an impact. So rather than just saying, oh, um, I did this food drive. You could quantify that by saying we impacted a thousand families by giving out over 20,000 canned goods. You know, it just creates more of a visual, a visualizer um, with your essay. It really helps to create a bigger picture rather than just saying you did this. So another thing that helped me with winning so much scholarship money is that I applied where people least expect to apply or even be eligible to apply. So let me explain. I have a video, which you can watch if you want to, of where I talk about how I was able to win several scholarships that I was technically ineligible for. And so as an example of one of these, I won a scholarship from a Chinese American organization based in Texas. And with their application, they said that they had a preference for applicants who were like East Asian of East Asian descent. However, I clearly am not um, Asian. I emailed them and said, hey, I know you have a preference for applicants like this, but as like an ally and everything of the Asian community, 
can I still apply for this scholarship? And they said, yes. And then I ended up winning it when I applied. So make sure you are applying in places that you least expect. Another example of this is Greek life organization. You do not have to be a member of Greek life organizations, whether that's a fraternity or sorority to win them. You don't even have to be from that particular gender. See, I have won a scholarship from a fraternity despite being a woman because you know fraternities are typically for men. And I have won a sorority scholarship from the AKA sorority, which my family wants me to be a part of. <laughs> but, um, and again, I am not a member of their organization. But yeah, make sure to look in places you least expect to be even eligible to apply. Brief intermission here. I hope that this has been helpful so far. However, did you know that this video is actually only the tip of the iceberg? I have so much to teach you. Let me explain. If you really want to increase your chances of winning scholarships, then consider enrolling in my online course, The Scholarship Algorithm. It gives you a step-by-step -step strategy on how to go about the overall scholarship process the most effective way possible, increasing your chances of winning by 10 times more. Here are some of the people who have won as a result of the course videos. Additionally, the course also comes with my book by the same title, The Scholarship Winning Likelihood Calculator, and my personalized services if you want to add that on too. See, if I had something like this back when I was a senior in high school, there is no doubt in my mind that I would have gotten a full ride scholarship right off the bat. No questions asked. And for those watching this video, you can get 25% off the basic master course with this promo code. Okay, now back to the main video. Another thing I figured out about scholarship applications was identifying the ones that people would be more likely to win versus less likely to win. So let's say a scholarship has um, a lot of paperwork, like it requires um, your resume, cover letter, work portfolio, transcript, essay, interview stage, letters of recommendation, all these things. Well, just think about it. If it requires so much paperwork, there are going to be less people trying to apply for that because no one wants to work too hard. Whereas if you're only applying for scholarships that are labeled as quote unquote easy and only take like five minutes to fill out, you're not going to be very likely to win because it's again, that is going to be very saturated with competition. Um, so if you come across a scholarship that requires a lot of different elements and aspects to it, really focus on that one more so than you would on that quote unquote easy scholarship. So another thing that really helped with my scholarship applications to stand out is that I have always been very versatile and multifaceted. So within my scholarship applications, I might talk about not only what I have done as far as um, my journalism background, but also my background in the arts. For example, I played the flute for seven years and was first chair in my marching band for like all throughout high school. Um, so you want to show how you are multifaceted in various different aspects. And this tip also pertains to showing how versatile you are within your particular study concentration. So let's say you are applying for a scholarship that is only for those within your major. So I'm broadcast journalism. And so instead of just talking about, oh, I have these skills as far as being an anchor, being a reporter, I would also talk about my skills as far as graphic design, because graphic design is needed to create like the graphics that you see on the news. I would talk about my skills in producing, who are the people behind the scenes calling the shots on how to operate the show uh, story by story in a newscast. So essentially with my application, I would talk about how I encompass every element, every aspect of my career field rather than just hyper-focusing on one given element. And so that leads me into my next point. You want to make sure that you have a strong work portfolio and preferably for that work portfolio to be digital, meaning you're creating, you're building your own website. Now don't don't be alarmed by the idea of creating your own website. There's plenty of free platforms that allow you to do so. For example, with my um, work portfolio, my journalism portfolio, I created mine totally for free using the site called journalportfolio.com. As long as you have an email address ending with .edu, you can create a free account with them. Another alternative to that is sites.google. I personally created my scholarship site using um, sites.google. So that's another user-friendly platform you can use to create your own website, build your portfolio. And when you have your scholarship applications, make sure to link to, to hyperlink to um, your work portfolio. Or perhaps if it's a physical application, you can't really hyperlink to that because you know it's physical rather than digital. Um, you can have a shortened URL link um, stated within your writing that they can type in easily 
and pull that up. Because again, as I was saying earlier in this video, it really does help to ensure that your application stands out more if you have some type of thing that can create more imagery, more visualization for your application. Now, this next tip is for all of my procrastinators out there. I bet that's you. Um, do not miss these deadlines, these scholarship deadlines. If you procrastinate, trick yourself about that deadline. I literally would have missed out on thousands of dollars of scholarships, perhaps like $25,000 in scholarships, had I not tricked myself about the deadline. Because I, I tend to be unorganized at times, and you shouldn't be like that. Um, don't repeat my mistake. So what I like to do, like let's say a scholarship is due September 30th, right? But instead of writing on my master list of scholarships I want to apply for, writing September 30th, I would instead write September 27th, September 28th, you know, two to three days before the actual deadline. And you especially want to do this if a scholarship application is the type of where you have to submit electronic letters of recommendation. And so by this, I mean, there are scholarship applications of where you can submit a PDF version yourself of the letters of recommendation that people wrote for you and already sent to you versus they have to go into this online portal themselves and fill out the information all over again. If you are with an application like that, that is a type that you do not want to apply for last minute because then your application is potentially put in jeopardy by that person who is writing your, your letter and their schedule because you don't know what's going on in their life. So Make sure you are not applying for those types of scholarships last minute. And if you come across one that requires that, um, take note of that and also give that person who is writing your letters of recommendation a fake deadline so that they don't prevent you from getting your money. So that leads me to my next point, which is to have strong letters of recommendation. Now, a lot of times when I am evaluating over people's scholarship applications, again, I have all of these different personalized scholarship services that you can use. And of course, there's my scholarship book, which details my strategies and my online course that details even more strategies to win. But anywho, your essay is the number one most important part of your application, whereas your letters of recommendation is like the second most important. And when it comes to your letters of recommendation, it is important that the person writing that letter has a purpose for being the person to write. They should be talking about and highlighting a particular experience that they had with you, preferably an experience of where they saw you grow, where you went from point A to point B. Like guys, your letters of recommendation shouldn't just be them listing out um, your accomplishments or just listing out fancy adjectives to describe you like, oh, this person is so creative, intuitive. Of course, you want those adjectives dropped in here and there, but that shouldn't be the overall essence of their writing. So make sure you're giving them a rundown or even like sharing this video with them, your letters of recommendation, so that they know what needs to be done. And preferably when you're reaching out to people for letters of recommendation, reach out to someone who already has experience writing one, because if they have experience, they're more likely to write something that is worthwhile as opposed to being brand new to it. Now, as for the final tip for this video is to simply keep applying and to never give up. And I mean that because again, even though I have won 30 scholarships, I have been rejected by over 70 scholarships because I apply for a little over a hundred scholarships. And so you shouldn't let that rejection get to you guys, okay? Rejection is a part of the process. You learn so much from your mistakes. I will repeat that. You learn so much from your mistakes. And as I said in my earlier video, which covers some of the top mistakes that you are making that are more than likely preventing you from even winning, um, you need to be seeking constructive criticism on your rejected applications. It's just as how when you go into office hours or tutoring, you are trying to figure out as to why you didn't do so well in that particular class or on that particular assignment. So make sure that you do not give up, keep applying, try to apply for like two to five scholarships a week or 10 to 15 scholarships a month, just create a habit of doing so. And honestly, the more you apply for scholarships, you are going to also increase your chances of getting other opportunities like fellowships, internships, or your dream job. So the more familiar you are with the process, it just overall helps you with any application, really. Like I have literally used the same exact techniques of winning scholarships to get me grant money for my business, 
to get me into competitive uh, programs. For example, the TikTok for Black Creatives program, I use the same exact techniques that I'm talking to you guys in this video and all my other videos in order to get into there. So with that all being said, make sure that you believe in yourself. And if you need a community of people who also will advocate for you, uh, continue to encourage you to apply, um, make sure to join my free scholarship advising group chat. I will link that in the description box down below. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end of this video. Make sure that you like, ooh, make sure that you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure to watch the full playlist of all of my scholarship related videos. And also if you're wanting to learn how to become an influencer, because I do be making a lot of money from this and I want to teach other students alike on how to do so because I am a student based influencer and the education industry um, is actually very lucrative. There's a lot of money to be passed around. So if you are a student or a teacher um, and you're wanting like an extra source of income to help pay the bills or you know create a six figure job because this is essentially a six figure job for me now um, make sure to watch my other video that talks about how to become an influencer. Anywho, bye.